the money on VSEN, the sports betting network. You're ready to kick off fall and football season with Bet Rivers Online Sportsbook. Join Bet Rivers Wednesday for win total Wednesday. Tomorrow, place a wager on any NFL or college season win total and get a $10 free bet. Head to betrivers.com or download the app all season long for the latest odds and unique promotions. Your go to book this fall, Bet Rivers. Whole new game. Here he comes. Humans loves him. We all love him. Matt Vaskersion, one of the best play by play guys out there. And uh, watch him, 5 Eastern on MLB Network. Always does a great job, MLB Network, and catch the spread. They do a great job uh, gambling and betting content as well. And he joins us to talk a little MLB. Uh, First thing, thanks for joining us. How about the schedule? Which I think baseball did a great job here with the postseason schedule where it goes Friday, Saturday, Sunday to start the best of three. Home team gets all three games if necessary. If you have to blow your ace on that Wednesday, you're in a world of hurt, and I'm glad they rewarded the teams that win their division and the one in the two seed. What say you? Yeah, I, you know, I agree. Hi, good morning, guys. Good to be with you as always. Yeah, the fact that winning the division now really, really counts for something, right? You get to met, miss that entire wild card round. Um, the the it's the best records that miss the wild card round, but winning that division and avoiding the three game series is huge. Getting them all at home. If you're in the wild card round is huge. The only, the, the challenge for baseball too, from a marketing standpoint here, you want to do something that rewards the better teams and the teams that back in should have a real uphill fight to get to a world series. Nothing against the O three Marlins, but mm-hmm. you know, when you get hot in September and then you get the last, seat in the wild card and then you win a world series good for you but what about the team whose narrative for five out of the six months during the season was that they just destroyed everybody there, there has to be more of a payoff there I, I wish there was a way for them to miss sundays altogether and not play postseason games on sundays yeah. mm-hmm. just yield to the to the nfl it's just not possible they've got to get through that schedule quickly and i i agree with you it, it's a it's really going to be fun this year that wild card round is going to be great I had the same thought about playing on the weekends and exactly what you just said. You have to reward teams for playing 162 games somehow. So they have to have an easier yeah. path, Matt. It's that simple. Yeah. I mean, the thing, the team I think of, I guess the last few years uh, is White Sox who, you know, if things shook out a little differently, they win the central in, in the last couple seasons. And then they maybe have a better chance to, to advance, uh, that team's been disappointing once the postseason begins. And maybe under this format, and by the way, the White Sox are kind of hot now, mm-hmm. maybe under this format that would have been uh, a different thing. It's it's good for the game when those sexier teams get a little, a little uh, leg up too. A week ago, I would say, yeah, of course, the big trade, the Padres are going to the playoffs. Don't worry about it. And they're going to be a tough out. Then with the news of the Tatis suspension, and now they're not hitting the ball, uh, and then I'm, I'm the same way with the Blue Jays. I mean, two weeks ago was forget about it. The Blue Jays are making the playoffs. I mean, who do you th- what do you think of those two teams and how they're playing now? And who can grab the final wild card in both leagues? Yeah, I, I, the thing I worry about with San Diego, they, have, you know, the Tatis thing for this year, I don't think it matters. You know, to count on him coming back, sure, it would have been big. It would have been a shot in the arm, but he hasn't played all year. Uh, and now, as it turns out, he won't play for quite a while. Um, <laughs> some of the excuses coming out of his camp are, 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 I, you know, I hope he's right. I hope he actually did have a medical cause for whatever he took. Um, but I worry more about the pitching there for San Diego, because after Darvish is a proven postseason commodity, uh, I, I love Snell if he can pitch at home all the time, mm-hmm. uh, Clevenger has yep. been okay. But when you can cons- consider that, you know, compare that big three to the others, uh, that they might be up against, but I worry about that a little bit. I think they're good enough to get in. I mean, that lineup is capable of, of blowing people away every day, so they're they're good enough to get in. Toronto has been hard to figure out. Yes, um, boy, I you know from a betting standpoint, really hard to figure out. There are nights they go flat, and you just don't ever see how when you consider the names in that lineup. Um, Kikuchi's been—I I don't think he's been what they wanted as a Ray replacement. Gosman's numbers are way down mysteriously, even though he was player of the week a couple weeks ago, his home road splits are worth watching. If you, if you get involved in those games and there are a couple other guys on the schedule tonight with that same 
that same kind of uh, home road uh, uh, differential. Uh, so I don't know, man. Neither one of those teams gives me a lot of a lot of confidence. And a lot of people had Blue Jays futures t- tickets to start the year. Uh, you had Gosman, you had Chapman for nothing. I thought that was a pretty good team, and I, I've been a little disappointed. Uh, Maddie, I, I love them. I have them 14-1. to 1. Um, I thought it was going to be a fun ride this regular season, and you know when they didn't add anybody in the rotation at the, de- at the deadline, I was like, okay, now you're going to be in October, and you're going to have to put out Barrios and Kikuchi in the playoffs? Oh, come on. I don't like those chances at all. Um, so tonight, we truly have, uh, I think, the best pitching matchup of the entire season, and I mean, it's it's rare when we get it like this good, and in fact, I think it's the deepest ever in the season, or probably in a long time, right? Since we've had two Three starters times with... since sixty nine, I think. Okay, so, sub two ERA is going going at it. Do you see an edge at all anywhere when Verlander takes on Cease tonight? I don't. Um, you know, the, everybody's inclination for a game like this, including mine, is going to be look at the under, um, and and that makes a lot of sense, right? I'm seeing sevens pretty much across the board with with a little uh, a little more of a tax on the under the the only comp for a game like this in recent past was in 2018 uh Degrom and Sale met when both of those guys were at the peaks of their powers and both had ERAs under 2 this late in the season that's the key and that game ended 4-3 Boston Red Sox won it uh against the bullpen of the Mets Sale went only 3 in that game Degrom was fabulous I, I don't know where you could go from a betting angle on that game outside of maybe a K prop for Cease because his numbers have been huge of late. Verlander gets up for big games, and I'm such a fan of that guy. I, I just, you know, everybody's talking about this maybe determining some votes in the Cy Young Award race with uh, uh, a cap tip to Shane McClanahan too, who's also in the conversation. I just think it's Verlander's to lose. Um, what he is in the midst of doing after not having pitched for 652 days at the age of 39, we just don't see it. I mean, there's, there's been only one guy his age to win an ERA title at under two. There's only been one other guy in the history of the sport to win an ERA title, a league ERA title, having not pitched the previous year. So as good as McClanahan's been, as hot as Cease is, the, the stat numbers and the narrative – stuff all points to Verlander for me yeah won't that play out like that's going to be a hot thing I believe for people who actually have votes right all everything that you just said the injury the age that's going to be unless the guy completely blows up and falls apart down the stretch like that's going to play really well with those guys with those people yeah I mean I I think the narrative stuff plays into it and there are others there are people like me uh who thought he should have won it when Blake Snell won it a few years ago in what was his best you know, most recent complete season. He was unbelievable that year and lost to Snell because, as we know, that award, starting with King Felix, when he won it without a lot of decisions, without a lot of wins, has turned into a peripheral stats award, right? You're talking about things that we didn't consider previously. It's not just wins, losses, and ERA anymore. Uh, but he, he checks all those boxes this year, too. Maybe Maybe voters have it as a push. Maybe this is one of those rare years where the last five to six weeks of the season is going to really determine who wins between those three. Okay. Uh, we have two minutes left in this segment. Uh, you mentioned home road splits going on tonight. Like what stands out to you on the card? Like which pitchers really caught your eye with their splits? Yeah. Let me give you a couple things that I've, I've caught uh, from yesterday. Um, Nestor Cortez tonight, his day night splits, in strikeouts per nine are dramatic. He strikes out 12 per nine in the daytime, and that number cuts almost in half at night. Uh, his prop, I think I've seen six and a half on him tonight. That might, I, I hate under strikeout props uh, just because they're not fun, and <laughs> I was the dummy that was advocating Spencer Strider over yesterday, even though it feels like that ship has sailed on his punch outs. Um, I think under Nestor might be a shrewd play today. And I, I keep looking at Brandon Woodruff. His home road ERA differential is dramatic this year. He's undefeated, mid twos at home, almost double that away from home. He goes off as a dog today with the Dodgers in town. There has to be 
value fading the Dodgers every once in a while if you can figure out when to do it. Right. When they lost the winning streak on Sunday in Kansas City, that would have been the day, right? You're getting the Royals at almost plus 300 on that afternoon. But mm-hmm. I think Woodruff might be an interesting play today, too, based on home road splits. Do you have a couple more minutes? Yeah, for sure. Okay. Hang tight, because I want to. I'm glad you brought that up, because I want to run something by you that's going to blow your mind. Um, on that game, it's only happened 1.4 percent of the time. In fact, five times in the last 366 games. And as of right now, this game qualifies. We'll run that by you. And also, we have to at, ask uh, Matt Vasgersian coming up next. Is it panic time in New York with the Pinstripers? Another dud performance from the offense last night as we roll along here on Follow the Money. It's VSIN, the Sports Betting Network. Can you hear Matt Vaskersian on the horn with us? Uh, MLB Network, his show pregame spread comes up today at 3 o'clock Eastern, noon Pacific. Matt, can you believe this? Uh, since 2020, and I have to credit Ralph Michaels with this tweet, they've played 366 games. They've been a dog five times. <laughs> so, right. Right now, they are currently a small dog, but this could easily flip and they can go off the favorite today. But as of right, I, I just how do you not laugh at that? I mean, that is, that is a staggering number. That is really unbelievable. I, I guess it's, it's believable when you consider the Dodgers, when you consider the public nature of that team and how good they've been. I mean, it's oh. right. It's that rare kind of convergence of both things, but Goodness, that's a that's incredible. So today, as we were just visiting between the commercials, there they are. You know, it's almost a pick 'em on that game in Milwaukee. Maybe for the reasons we talked about with Woodruff being good at home. Uh, if you're ever going to find the Dodgers at a reasonable number tonight, would be your night, I guess. Yeah, is there somebody on that team not getting enough respect, and maybe uh, his name should be in the mix for the MVP in the National League? Yeah, I, I think it's Trey Turner. Um, you know, a lot of places far and away overseas put up um, opportunities to get on MVP choices at the all-star break. And it, it, it Turner's, he's not even the first candidate on his own roster. And I think he should be, he's a multiple hit per night guy. He's put together two 20 game hitting streaks this year. He is constantly on base. When you lead your team in RBIs and stolen bases, it's pretty rare feat, especially for a national league shortstop. It's, it's a short list. Uh, people talk about bets. People talk about Freeman before Turner. And I think that Turner might be the guy with better value for MVP. I, Goldschmidt is likely to win this thing. But if I had to pick a Dodger, it'd be Turner to back. We did a lot of this last week, and we're not the only ones. And there's been a lot of people, guys who cover the league, saying, hey, take a look at Diaz for Cy Young, what he's doing. Uh, Sandy does it again. I mean, it's just, and not to mention, uh, the, the Marlins have been, it's just hysterical. It's 16 in a row, and I think 25 of 29. The offense has scored three runs or fewer. Uh, how bad it's been. And this guy's been lights out the whole season. Is there anything there? You know, you, you're in you, MLB Network, guys you talk to cover the league. Is there any chance? Because the numbers crashed on Diaz, Cy Young. Let's say you. Well, there, there are people at MLB Network, certainly, that, that, that like to get that Diaz conversation started because we have, I mean, we're like SNY central. Uh, it, like we have so many Mets sycophants in our building. It's nauseating. Uh, and not that I have anything against the Mets, but come on, we're supposed to be shining lights on all 30 here. So yeah, we have people running that up the flagpole. I don't buy it for a second, maybe in the absence of a dominant starter year, maybe when there's, you know, some nice stories among starting pitchers, you could advocate for a, a closer, not this year, not with what Alcantara is doing. And the, the way, by the way, the way to play Alcantara this year hasn't been strikeout props. It, it hasn't necessarily been to win, even though he does, it's out. Outs, I mean, that yeah. guy gets deeper into starts, right? Yes. If you, you catch him at anything around, I don't know, he, he, that, and that number keeps going up, but between 16 and 18 and a half outs, he's pretty good for you in that regard. I mean, geez, I, he, he'll go into the eighth and ninth. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's like the one guy that will good consistently do that now. Yeah, I read a story yeah. yesterday where people pointed out if the Marlins were good, Alcantara is having such a great season, he'd be in the mix for the National League MVP. You buy that? That's fair. That Yeah, that's, wow. that's fair. I, again, as good as Goldschmidt has been, his, that season of his has been historic. And I, you know, it, it'd be even more of a, a threat if he pitched someplace other than South Florida, imagine if he's putting together a season like this in Philly yes. or New York or Chicago or LA. Uh, yeah. You'd really be talking about him getting a share of that for sure. 
follow the money, Paulie and Mitch, Visa and the Esports Betting Network. Matt Vasker's and our guest, MLB announcer, MLB Network. Check out pregame spread, usually 5 Eastern. Uh, they bump it up a couple hours today. Does a great job going over the card. Uh, how about the Phillies? We took a shot at 18-1 to 1 to win the National League. They're doing all this without Harper. He's coming back. And I can go, uh, I can go Wheeler, Nola, and even Thor if I get in the playoffs here. Do, what are you, buy, you buying the Phillies on a future ticket? That that is exactly why, Paul. That is exactly why I buy the Phillies. That you know, as Matt Humans described lovingly uh, back in April, that beer league softball lineup uh, has now been complemented by a pretty good rotation. And if they, you know, all these teams that have five with three dominant starters, you have to understand that in the postseason, those four or five guys are going to slide to the bullpen. Mm-hmm. So if Ranger Suarez and Kyle Gibson move into a bullpen role, suddenly you're not nearly as worried about what can be a shaky bullpen for Philly, and it's better than it was last year. I give them a lot of credit because they've fixed everything that was wrong there for the most part. They went out and got Syndergaard to give them a solid top three. They cleaned up center field by trading for Brandon Marsh. Granted, they gave up a catching prospect who looks like he's going to be really, really good. That deal could be a very good one for the Angels in, in a year and a half. But for the Phillies, who are trying to win now and get in there, are they going to catch the Mets or the Braves? Eh, I don't know. But I don't think that matters because as a wild card team, they are super dangerous. Right. And they have an easy schedule the rest of the way. And uh, back to New York. Uh, what, what, I guess it was smoke and mirrors for a while there. But now between the offense and losing to Boston a couple times and getting shut out last night, what's going on with the Yankees? I think for me, it means that we have seen the value of Giancarlo Stanton. Uh, his absence here, for me, is the story. And the connectivity in that lineup with him there is just completely different. The, it, you know, what's just as amazing about that is you'd think that this kind of collective malaise with the Yankees would have affected Aaron Judge at this point. It has not. So people that are talking about the great postseason races, whether it's NL MVP, NL Cy Young. The best for me is between Otani and Judge for AL MVP because, look, I'm an Angels guy. I'll play that as a homer all day and do so gladly. But I don't think anybody could take issue with somebody who was supporting Aaron Judge based on how good and how important he's been and how hot he stayed despite all the kind of wobbliness around him. Yep, totally agree. And now he is like minus 650. Is that too high, you think, right now? Or is that does he deserve that to be that big of a favorite? I, I mean, we're we're running out of canvas here in the season because a lot of the a lot of the uh, oh, but be careful, dot 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 stuff on on him has been you know there's an injury risk there. Well, there is with everybody. Sure. So I, you know, uh, Otani's team narrative is not very strong this year, and and what Judge is doing to lift an entire roster, uh, at, yeah, I, I guess it's it's a high number. I'd never play it, <laughs> but I, I see why it's there. Uh, Matt, you are the best. Uh, your show is outstanding as well. It's called Pre-Game Spread. Today, it's at 3 o'clock Eastern Major League Baseball, MLB Network, 12 o'clock Pacific time. Thank you so much for the time, as always, today. We really appreciate that. Good talking to you, boys. Thanks. You got it. Yep. Thank you. Be good. Well done. Okay. A lot of great information there from Matt. Mm-hmm. Looking at uh, tonight's Dodger, card. That Dodger thing. Well, I mean. Oh, my God. That's just, uh, as of right now, and the... While we were talking, some money came in on the Brewers. Okay, I or respect, I respect. numbers were adjusted. Yep, yep. The Verlander, see, because the White Sox need this. I mean, if they could win this series, because it's an easy schedule after this uh, next week and a half. It was a big win last night, and I'll somehow yep. if Cease can get it done here and keep that uh, record going. I don't think up. I don't think I can grab the plus money, the short plus money today that you can find on the White Sox. I think Matt's right. Not much of an edge here. I think he just. Kick back tonight, turn this game on TV, and enjoy it for what it is. Right. And I would gladly take, I mean, the the under just screams like a 2-1 game. I think it would be phenomenal if we had like a 1-1 game in the eighth inning and both guys were just like eight strikeouts, nine strikeouts deep. Rarely, rarely works out that way, though, it seems. No, I know, I know. You, you know, it could be 3-2 in the third. Uh, but, yeah, what a matchup. Actually, you know what that's going to be? Mm. That is going to be, and uh, I'll see if we can get it in the first inning. Yeah. Will a run be scored in the first inning of that game? That number, I will search for that number because that will probably be a very high number yeah. on the yes. You put me on this too and made me aware of this. Th- this Philly schedule's a joke. 
It really is. Now, they get the Mets coming up, but Cincinnati, Pittsburgh, Arizona, San Francisco, Miami, Washington, Miami, Atlanta, Toronto, Atlanta, Cubs, Washington. I mean, it's just uh, yeah. so many winnable games here and games That's where they're going to be big favorites. Definitely doable. I'm looking right now. Um, okay. So over a half a run in the first inning, I'm seeing plus 120. Verlander against Cease. I'd like a little bit more than that. Maybe probably shop around, probably find a little bit higher than that. Up next, the mover of markets. NFL better and handicapper Adam Chernoff is going to join the program coming up. Uh, preseason numbers were flying around like crazy on Monday. What did he like? What does he still like? And what info stands out so far this week? We will ask Adam Chernoff all that coming up here and follow the money. It's VSIN, the Sports Betting Network. Visit VEASAN.com to get current odds, listen for free, find showtimes, and download VEASAN's sports betting podcasts.